welcome back to the Do-Right Shop. Today we're back working on the barrel train. Now it's been a while since we were working on the barrel train, primarily because my third son was born a little bit early. All is well and we're back in the shop. But the last time we were in here working on it, we just welded together that frame. I've gone ahead and painted the frame. Nothing super exciting, it's just a rattle can of black Rust-Oleum black gloss paint. I also installed the two Harbor Freight wheels and installed the two cotter pins to hold the wheels on there. So we are now ready to mount the barrel. We want to get it square to the frame. Now I know that sounds a little weird, but if you look at the back of the barrel train, we use the two bum holes that are in the back, uh, like their tail lights. I put a reflector on there. The kids think it's fun, like they have lights on the back of their barrel train car. And it would look really funky if the barrel train was going through the field and the lights were crooked or not straight. So what I do is I actually kind of build a register off of this. I took the, the level and I laid the level across there and I just was able to rotate this barrel in the frame to get it square. Then I take just a typical frame square, use a combination square if you have one in your shop, and I find a center point on the barrel and I put a little mark. That's my indexing mark. I'll draw a register off of that a little bit later. And what that means is that this is exactly where where I'm going to start to lay my template that I've cut out. Now, before we get to the template, let me talk about a hole size. I took the liberty of taking one of the cars off the barrel train and standing it up so you could see the profile of the car and how I cut the hole. That hole isn't super important. I just played with it a little bit and that's what came, I came up with that worked the best. You may want to make a bigger hole or a smaller hole. I found that hole size for most kids to be pretty good as it allows them to still reach the steering wheel when they're riding in the seat, but gives them enough room to get their legs in and out, even for some of the bigger kids, 10, 12, 13 years old, provided you don't have monstrous kids like I do. Let me give you the dimensions of what I cut. The opening front to back is about 21 inches. From the edge here to our indexing mark is about 13 inches. So it's about 13 more inches this way. So that means our circumference from cut to cut is about 26 inches, or our semi-circumference. Now what I'm going to do is get this barrel set up, this one set up, so we can go ahead and actually measure it. You can see how we lay out our marks, drill a couple of holes, get the jigsaw, and get this hole cut open so we can mount this in the frame of the barrel train. Now one thing we didn't talk about is front to back placement of the barrel. What I found was three inches from the back of the frame to the edge of the barrel works out about perfect for balance. Doesn't put too much tongue weight on it, doesn't make it too tongue light. You may have to play with that a little bit on your own, but I imagine three inches will get you real close. I went ahead and drew a mark right here at three inches, and that's where we'll place the barrel when we get ready to mount it. We need to find the center of this barrel, and we need to find it in reference to these two bung holes being parallel with the ground. And what I'm going to do is have my helper for the day uh, come over here and give me a hand. Go over here and give me a hand, bud. I'm going to take this, this square, and I've already pre-measured a mark, which was basically the radius, or half the diameter. And I've got a little mark here, and I'm going to put my square on that mark. That puts me in the dead center of the barrel at the top. Now what I want him to do, take the pin, and put me on mark right here beside. Nice black mark, so I can see it good. There you go. Good, good deal. Now, that's my indexing mark. That indexing mark is going to show me where the top center of the barrel is for the alignment of my template. Now, we talked about the template before. Now I want to tell you that this template is about 13 inches. What I did is take a piece of poster board, I folded it in half. When I cut it out, that let me have a template that was you know, symmetrical on both sides of the line. That line is also the center point of this. It's about 13 inches from here and about 21 inches from here. Your barrels may have a slightly different shape, so your template may have to vary just a little bit. This is our center line. This is the center of our template. He just drew a mark back here, right here. So now what I need to do is to take and I need to take, buddy. Take 
take that so it can go in here. And we're on our mark right here. You want to mark the barrel for me? There you have it. So easy a six-year-old could do it. Now we're gonna pull this loose. And keep in mind that this line is just a is just a guide for us to use. I already can see I'm gonna change this line slightly. I'm gonna move it about about half an inch forward because there's a rib there, and I don't want to saw it in the middle of that rib. Right at this corner here and at this corner over here, we're gonna drill a hole. That's gonna be where we put our our saw blade through to start our cuts. Okay, so what we've done is we've taken this, this unit bit here and we've drilled a couple of holes like we talked about. We saw it here across the back. Now we're gonna make the final cut. We're gonna cut here along the front. We used a jigsaw with a big, nasty, aggressive looking blade and about a medium speed. So here we go, we're gonna cut this out. The edges came out real nice. They're not sharp at all, but I am gonna run a file over them real quick just to knock any sharpness out of them. Well, I like that. We'll probably finish that up with a little bit of sandpaper here to get a nice smooth edge on it. But we've definitely got any sharpness out of it. We need to position this barrel now where we want it to live permanently. Because we're going to drill a few holes. Once we get those holes drilled, um, we'll put some bolts in and this barrel will be, will be affixed. So we had a mark back here, three inches from, from the end to the back. And then we need to make sure this barrel still level and of course it's not we're going to adjust it till it's level we're still in our mark and we're level now the third thing we need to check is to make sure that this this backbone you can see the shadow of the backbone runs through the barrel straight if you have a little trouble you can take a flashlight you shine a flashlight up underneath there and you're able to see that backbone all the way up there Okay, right there, you can see the hole. And this is my little trick for, you can take a tape measure and make all your math and subtract and add and come up to where that hole needs to be. Or we could just shine a flashlight up underneath there. Right there, the flashlight shines through the steel frame where we drilled the hole, that's where our hole is gonna be. Everything looks nice and straight. We'll check level one more time. I'm gonna get my helper over here to help me hold the barrel. Come around up here, bud. Come here. Hold it and don't let it move. Stand right there, both hands on the barrel. Don't let it move. That one looks good. And just like that, our hole is in the right position. And we've got two more holes to drill, but before we do that, we want to kind of put a bolt through there to locate it. Now I made this for all of my barrel trains, all the other cars, and I didn't show you making this, but it's pretty straightforward and pretty simple. 
All it is is a piece of flat bar. Now this happens to be a piece of stainless. I'm not gonna tell you to go out and buy a piece of stainless to make this because it's really expensive. This was left over from a job I had. I will tell you if you make this out of carbon mild steel, be sure to paint both sides of it because this car does get exposed to a lot of weather. So this is a piece of stainless. Uh, I think it's inch and a quarter wide by whatever, 3 sixteenths. Think of this like a washer, just drill the hole right in the center of it. We're going to take this bolt. We're just going to leave it there. We're going to leave it loose for right now. This helps spread the pressure over a wider area so that we don't have such a small area with a little tiny flat washer. Now we've got two more holes back here that we need to drill holes for. We want to once again check level to make sure that this is sitting on the frame and level. Okay, we're money right there. Now why this is so critical, this hole in the front, we still have a little movement back here. Once I drill these two holes, that's that. This back end can't move. So I wanted to make sure they're, they're square. Now, we're gonna do the same trick we did before with the flashlight. bolts that went here on either side in the back are 5 16 by 1 inch. The one here in the front is a 5 16 by 2 inch. They're stainless steel bolts. Uh, they'll help it from rusting. I'm going to put a bolt through and a nut on the bottom side. We're not going to tighten it up. I purposely over drilled these holes when we made the frame by a little bit to allow us some final adjustment in the end. We're going to do the same thing here again. Now before you panic and say, oh my gosh, you're going to drill a hole through the top of your flashlight. Realize that the flashlight is probably about that far away from the hole in the bottom. You put that on there for me, buddy. Now, once again, we're going to check level one more time, and then we're going to tighten everything up. thing we got to do. We got to drill some holes in the bottom to let the rainwater come out. Now, my lesson learned here was that not only does rainwater need to come out, but sand and dirt and crunched up leaves and any other thing that you 
can think of that's in the bottom of kids' shoes. When you bring a hose to this, you want to be able to wash it right out of the bottom. So what I wound up doing was, after I drilled a bunch of 3 8 holes with a drill bit, I wound up coming back with a hole saw and hole sawing a bunch of holes in the bottom, and that actually worked great. Let me jump over, get the hole saw set up, I'll come back and I'll show you how I did that. All right, so what I've got is a, a bimetal hole saw, and really any hole saw will work for this plastic barrel. It's an inch and a quarter. If you've got a one inch, if you've got an inch and a half, it really doesn't matter. I wouldn't get much above inch and a half because of the, the hole sizes just kind of get ugly down there in the bottom. But inch and a quarter seems to be good for me. It lets small leaves and that kind of stuff wash down uh, right out without being too big. Turn our flashlight on again so we can see right where the member is. And then right at the back corner. I just drilled a couple of holes. One on each side of the frame member. I'm going to do the same thing in the middle and then up front. That way, no matter which way this thing is tilted, the water will always find its way out. on that one I just caught the edge of the frame that's not cool we'll move over a little bit more on this one you know why I did that because I didn't move the flashlight Flashlight for sure. No harm, no foul. All right, so we've got the drain holes cut in the bottom. It's all mounted to the frame. Really what we have left to do now is put the little tiny dash piece in here and a seat. With those in place, all that's left to do is mount the steering wheel, put a few graphics on the side, and we'll put a few reflectors on the back to match the rest of them. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed what you saw here today. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and like us on Facebook, please. Somewhere down below here is a link. See you soon.